Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 2 and moving ahead with the last topic of this chapter which is 2.8 Selecting a White Box Test Technique. Now when you talk about this segment, it's all about how do you determine what kind of technique is applicable at different points. That means depending on a scenario, depending on a type of application or kind of complexity and risk involved, you may select and determine a particular technique to be used at any point of time. But that's not all. There might be several other constraints which need to be considered by a technical test analyst before determining set of techniques or any particular technique to be used at any point of time. To get started, the very first and simple thing to start with is understand some of the basic things, what exactly could be more important in order to select a white box test technique. The context of the system and the test will have an impact on its product risk and criticality levels. These factors influence the required coverage matrix and the depth of the coverage to be achieved. Now the most important thing why you would like to select a particular set of technique or maybe a unique technique for any scenario is to achieve a specific level of coverage because each and every technique allows you to have different set of coverage or different level of coverage. Thus, it will be more important at what point of time which technique will be more useful to attain that level of coverage with respect to any particular technique. And that's what is more important for a technical test analyst to analyze and determine the technique accordingly. In general, the more critical the system and the higher the product risk level is, has more rigorous coverage required and the higher the need of the time and resource to achieve the desired coverage. So these are some add-on which we have been talking about since foundation which becomes the common uh, constraints to be considered when talking about selecting a technique. Sometimes the required coverage matrix may be derived from applicable standards which means that apply to the software system as well. Now Yes, there might be standards involved because when you are talking about the non-functional parameters or quality characteristics of a product, a lot of standards may come into picture. But remember team, this technique or this segment does not talk about a question on standards itself. These standards are for example. Now whenever you see for example in the syllabus of any ISTQB certification, this is not going to be a part of your examination. So standards are only for your example, so just understand that. Now here, for example, if the software were to be used in an airborne environment, it may be required to conform to standard DO-178C, which is in Europe also known as ED-12C. Now DO here means document, so it's document 178C. This standard contains the following five failure conditions. Now this has a list of issues which are uh, failures which we need to check on when it comes to the airborne environment and uh, what are they? A. Catastrophic. Failure may cause lack of critical functions needed to safety fly or land the plane. Come on, that's the most interesting thing which a person has to take care of when we have uh, you know more than 100 or 200 people airborne with us together and we are securing their safety when they fly with us. B. Hazardous. Failure may have a large negative impact on safety or performance efficiency. C. Major. Failure is significant but less serious than A or B. Minor. Failure is noticeable but the less impact than C. Whereas E is no effect. Failure has no impact on the safety. Now what you see from here is the classification of the five failure types which can be determined for airborne systems to define what kind of you know defects can be actually or scenarios can be divided into. It could be catastrophic, hazardous, major, minor or no effect. It is also possible that sometime a failure may not have uh, have no effect on the safety point of view. So yes this is how we can categorize and based on that we can look for what kind of effort is required to test that feature. Adding on further here is to talk a little more about some of the considerations which may help you to determine how much or what kind of technique would be most recommended in certain scenarios. So if the software system is categorized as level A, it must be tested to 100% MCDC coverage, 
If it is level B, it must be tested 100% decision coverage and MCDC is optional whereas level C requires 100% statement coverage at a minimum. So from the previous example you do understand that these are the different failures which we have learnt right now based on the standard 178C. Now these are the recommendation for that for if you have failures according to that you just have to do the needful accordingly here. But yes, likewise, there are certain other standards as well. As an international, that is IEC 61508 is an international standard for functional safety of programmable electronic safety related systems. The standards has been adapted in many different areas, including automotive, rail, manufacturing, nuclear power plant, and machinery. Criticality is defined using a scale of safety integrity level, that is SIL, where SIL1 is the least critical and SIL4 is the most critical. The standard gives recommendation for the test coverage as shown in the below table. So now that means the exact definition for SIL and also the meaning of the recommended and highly recommended is defined in the standard for more details. If you wish to do that, you can go for it and understand more about what is IEC 61508. Now here this table just simply gives you that what kind of C SIL uh, criticality is for different types of uh, industries like automotive, rail, manufacturing, nuclear and machinery and based on the level of SIL criticality what kind of recommendation you may have. So that table is just shown here for SIL level 1. 100% uh, statement coverage is recommended. 100% uh, branch coverage and 100% MCDC coverage is recommended. Whereas for two, uh, statement coverage is highly recommended compared to branch and MCDC coverage. SIL level three, uh, statement and branch both are highly recommended compared to MCDC coverage. Whereas SIL four being the most critical type of product has everything highly recommended. That means it does also shows that you may have several combination of different techniques in order to meet the expectation of most critical products when you are making that and it might involve the safety and or the life of people in terms of making sure that they are very much secure and safe when they are traveling with you so that's what is more important to understand for a technical test analyst that other than knowing the techniques the right point of applying it is equally important and that's what we call as the most popular term that is a smart technical test analyst so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'll be there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring and keep understanding the context i'll be getting back to you with next video on sample questions of chapter 2 thanks for watching the video team and happy learning